Joe at the hospital, yeah. He wasn't as yesterday. He was anemic. He was low on iron. Meeting call to order. Roll call, please. Councilman Gann. Here. Councilman McBride. Councilman Harrell. Councilman Stamey. Councilman Hatmaker. Councilman Fair. Here. Mayor Burke. Here. Do you hear a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved. Motion and motion in a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. A prayer this evening be given by Councilman Gann, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Father, we thank thee for where we live, for how you, how you bless us every day with what we need to make this a beautiful community and one that is loved by all who lives here. We pray that you be with us as we try to make it a better place, as we try to make decisions that will make places even more desirable for people to, to live here and to work here. Lead, God, direct us now, Father, in all that we do and the decisions that we make. For in name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Larry. Do you hear a motion for the review and the approval of minutes of the previous meeting dated April 25th, 2022? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. At this time, we'll be recognizing any citizen with grievances or praises for the city. started registration for our summer reading program. Uh, you can do that online or you can come into the library to register. Uh, programs are going to start June 7th, 7th and run through July 29th. Um, we've got everything from great story times every Wednesday morning to uh, special visitors coming in. We've got the uh, Zoomobile from Knoxville coming in. iGEMS Nature Center is coming in. Uh, we've got people coming in from Norris Dam. The park rangers are coming in. We've got a couple different musical performers coming up this summer as well. Um, they're family friendly, kid friendly. Um, we've also got lots of computer program, computer classes for our adults. We're also doing a paper making class for our adults and a book binding class that feeds off of the paper making class. We've also got some teen programs as well. Um, but it's all in our lovely brochures and you can pick these up at the library. And anybody got questions for me? Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I do have, um, under communications from the mayor, I do have an appointment I um, need to make for E911 with the passing of Steve Pyatt. Um, i like to um, appoint Jeff Little to that term, term ending seven, was it seven one bill, seven one twenty three? Yes. Here a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Also, um, I was going to talk about, we had a speaker that came in um, to the community center last week with um, THDA. And his name was um, um, always Ralph um, Perry. And uh, there's just some real good information that I wanted to share, but I'd like to, I want to hold off on that till the next meeting. And it's nothing controversial. It's just kind of what I took from it and just the, some good numbers that Hopefully we can, I wish it was a situation where he came about a year ago. I think it had been a lot more helpful than it was, you know, after the, after the, the fact or after everybody kind of had their own opinions. But um, hopefully we get back on a little bit of an understanding consistently what we agree or disagree on. But um, it, it was just a good meeting. I just wanted to share some of those facts. But I'm going to wait until next month until hopefully we have more than four um, at, on council. 
Um, moving on under um, C School Board Report, Ms. Johnson. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> hey, that's your car. That's your ride home. You, you better be that's nice. A, he better be nice if he wants to ride home. Um, no, we are wrapping up our school year this week, so we have three and a half more school days. Friday will be our last half day. We are doing um, sixth grade graduation at Faith Promise, Clinton Elementary School. We've grown so much that we can't fit under one roof with the whole entire school with all the family that comes, and we hate to limit the number of people who come to support our children. So we're going to be two, doing two different graduation um, ceremonies. Clinton Elementary will be at 9 o'clock, and then North and South will do a combined graduation at 11. And what we intend to do is just flip-flop those each year. And so this is Clinton's turn to have the 9 o'clock, and next year North and South will do the 9 o'clock. But that's going to be at Faith Promise Church at the Clinton campus. And then wanted to report to you all some great news that we got regarding North Clinton Elementary School. And so we knew this last month, but I wasn't able to share it. But um, we use a program called iReady, which is um, the vendor's name is Curriculum Associates. And they have done some extensive research there in school districts across the nation. And they predicted what they felt like the growth would be with COVID and the global pandemic and everything that we were dealing with last year. And this is the benchmark that our kids take three times a year that help us predict proficiency, but it also shows us the individual student academic growth that has been made. And so they set the uh, growth expectation and then they created a category of schools called Beat the Odds Schools. And there was only 300 schools in the nation that got this category, not school districts, but individual schools in the nation. And we were the only elementary school in the state of Tennessee to get this distinction, which means that North Clinton Elementary School made more academic growth than any other school in the state of Tennessee last school year. And this is on the iReady assessment. But they used a 1.7 standard deviation to determine who was going to be a beat the odds school. You had to make more, more gains than that. North Clinton Elementary School made 2.7 and 2.8 standard deviations above what they projected the growth to be. And to put that into perspective, once you reach the 3.0 3 standard deviation, they kicked you out of the research study as an outlier. So the growth that they made was enormous. And so we held a great big surprise celebration at North Clinton Elementary School with cookies. And we surprised the kids and surprised the teachers. The funny thing about it was is that we decided to take E.T. with us, and when he walked in the door, everybody started screaming and jumping and shouting, and everybody thought that the surprise celebration was because E.T. had returned. <laughs> and so I'm not really even sure how excited they were that they got to beat the odd school because that wasn't near as exciting as E.T. being back on campus. But that has resulted in two national media outlets reaching out to us. So we interviewed with the New York Times earlier, actually on Monday, yesterday we interviewed with them and whether we make the cut for the story who knows but we interviewed with them and then NPR has also reached out and heard about us so hopefully we're going to get some national attention from that but as we close down next week we'll have about 75 of our kids going to BizTown for a four-day camp there that Clinton City Schools pays for and it's a free enrichment opportunity for our fourth through sixth graders and then on June 6th the schools are back open again at North Clinton Elementary School for summer learning camp so we will run a summer learning camp from June 6th to July 2nd um, for those four weeks and we are starting a rising kindergarten boost camp this time which will be a four-week half-day program for our kindergartners who are rising up to try to give them a jump start into the school year next year so we're certainly not slowing down for the summer okay. so any questions okay. for me Ms. Johnson I, I hate to even mention this but I noticed that our governor was able to get through the Supreme Court the fact that Shelby County and, and uh, Davidson. Davidson County are going to be allowed to give their students assistance toward attending private school, which in every facet except name is vouchers. Yep. How will, will that affect the amount of money that we get? Or It won't affect us initially, but we know that's just the gateway. So initially, the Tennessee Supreme Court said that they were allowed to do that, so vouchers will go in place with uh, Metro Nashville and Shelby. 
but we know that the intent is to let that be a pilot program and then bring to all counties. So vouchers is definitely coming our way. What is interesting is that two weeks prior was when TISA was approved, which is a student-centered funding model which ties a certain dollar amount to each kid. And so it's just very, very ironic that that got passed right before the Supreme Court has said that now vouchers are legal in the state of Tennessee. So what you're gonna see down the pike is that amount of money that's tagged to that student will be going to private schools. So it will impact us in is the it, near future. It's a three-year pilot program? Yes. Yep. Was. And I was disappointed to see in the paper that it had the full support of our Lieutenant Governor. It did, it did. I will tell you that uh, Lieutenant Governor McNally did advocate for us with the TISA that all three schools in Anderson County get something called cost differential factor, which gives us a little bit more money because of cost of living. Um, and they had taken that out and we did reach out to him and ask him to advocate to get that put back in and he did. So that will benefit our three school systems, but I was disappointed as well to see that that was supported. Anything else? Thanks, Kelly. And we do actually have a budget amendment, and it is for real this month. It's not a fake budget amendment. <laughs> we're here. We're... What are you trying to pull over on us? I did try it. G Gail caught me pretty quick. <laughs> um, everybody should have a, a budget amendment number six, a memo for myself that summarizes um, general purpose school fund and the... Uh, <clears throat> cafeteria fund federal projects fund just reflects some tdoe approved programming changes um, but no increase or decrease in revenues expenditures um, general purpose school fund um, just allocating some money based on some of the federal stimulus that we got um, maneuvering some salaries trying to spread that the benefit of those programs uh, beyond the original three years that the grant allotted so we can use these monies uh, into the future um, and then the other uh, budget amendments in general purpose school fund just reclassify uh, expenditures and revenues to match the programming that we followed um, pretty much normal and ordinary for this time of year the end of the year budget amendment any questions no nope. Hear a motion for approval of budget amendment number six. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Gann. Yes. Councilman McBride. Councilman Harold. Councilman Stamey. Councilman Hammaker. Councilman Ferris. Yes. Lambert. Yes. Budget amendment number six Thank passes. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Clinton Regional Planning Commission report. Councilman Gann. I found it first. Let's go to the Planning Commission first. Uh, new business, vertical bridge development requesting final flat review and approval for property located at 1310 Eagle Bend Road. Uh, this is for uh, a corner of a piece of property that is there so that they can put in a cell tower. And this is going to be a, an, an ongoing issue that we're currently working on some guidelines for cell towers because that's that's something brand new that we didn't have to worry about several years ago. And Mr. Crowley has been an invaluable help in, in helping us understand some of the things about the cell tower and uh, potential dangers that we have there. But since we really don't have anything in place, uh, this, this was passed. And then applicant to Kayla, Tennessee Corporation requesting site plan review and approval for Taco Bell located at 1114 North Charles G. Seavers Boulevard property zone B2. Uh, this is a total demolishing and rebuilding of the Taco Bell up on the uh, boulevard. Uh, and that's going to be in the same place it is in, today. In, the current, in the current location. It's just, they're just tearing it down, putting up a new one. I made a comment. It's, like, it's hard to believe that a town like Clinton has two Taco Bells three or four miles apart. <laughs> he said, yeah, they're trying to beat Dollar General. <laughs> so good luck and we, that. We, did, uh, we did pretty well asked the, the gentleman who was in charge of it to make sure that the uh, appearance was such that uh, we weren't looking at a metal building Taco Bell. We it's going to be consistent to what the one what is. The, what the others are. Yeah. And then WB Realty LLC requesting plan unit development site plan approval for property located at 301 315 
Broad Street. Uh, this was tabled until the June 13 meeting since there was nobody here to speak on that. And then, uh, I can get to the other one. Technology is wonderful. I know one of them was the. Uh, you want to look at mine? Yeah, if mine's not going to go back. I don't think. The uh, uh, this was uh, to begin with. You had the uh, the request for the softball field at Clinton High School, and that was withdrawn. So we did not take any action on that. Applicant W B Realty requesting to access a road that is not a collector arterial to reduce. The peripheral setback from 25 feet to 5 feet to increase the maximum density from 12 to 22 and a half for a planned unit development at 303 and 315 Broad Street. Since there was not a representative present to discuss this with us, and there are a lot of questions and a lot of things that we need to, to find out about, so that was tabled. And then vertical develop, bridge development requesting lot size variance so that they could put up this cell, cell tower, and that was approved. Uh, and then we're, we're, as I say, we're looking at uh, guidelines for cell tower uh, restrictions. Any questions for Council McGann? Thanks, Larry. Clinton Utilities Board report, Councilman Fair, or I mean Vice Mayor, I'm sorry, Fair. Um, financials should be in your, in your package and also, there's three reports on our fault location isolation service restoration services that um, avoided several hours of outages for our, for our customers and rate payers. Uh, that's affectionately known at CUB as FLIZZER. So if anyone has any questions, I will take them. Any questions for Zach? Thanks, Zach. That's it. Do you have any um, anything else under Green Market Day or anything? No, they're still having a lot of summer programs. Just check the website. They, they've got stuff going on almost all the time. Would remind everybody tomorrow, uh, beginning at 7:30, is the uh, Boy Scout recognition breakfast for Rick Meredith. So that starts at 7:30. Uh, they're starting to serve at 7:30. Yes, 7:30 starts at eight. Program starts at eight. That's if you want to eat, you got to be there at 7:30. Thanks, Larry. You gotta get ahead of Archie. <laughs> Archie's not here, is he? <laughs> He's watching. <laughs> General Government Report, Mr. Houck. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of updates. We don't have anything for approval tonight. Um, the traffic signalization project at North Charles Severs Boulevard. This is at Doe Run Boulevard and the New Buddies Barbecue and the one at Tanner Lane. We've received notification from our signal project coordinator is from significant delays with material fabrication and shipment for this project, which is di directly related to COVID pandemic. A um, few changes since we actually did the report. We think we can go ahead with some of the project, the possibly the mast arms and actually the signals, but where we're having trouble is the actual cabinets that the, the controls for the signals. They're telling us anywhere from a nine to 12 month delay and they've checked with several suppliers and that's about the quickest they can get them. So it's gonna be a significant delay. Our thought process is go ahead and get as much done as we can and get it in when we can before the price of the rest of it goes up. And that way when we do get the cabinets in, we'll be ready to, to get it installed and get the system up and going. So hopefully maybe by the first of the year, which we were hoping actually by the end of summer to get it in, but it looks like now it's gonna be at least nine more months probably. Um, Harbor Drive, which this is a project, of course, we've been talking about for three or four years. It actually goes back to the mid 80s uh, with, with different city managers, different mayors and councils. So it's been a pretty lengthy project, but hopefully we're coming to an end. Right now, CUB and Powell Clinch are working, to the working on the installation and the relocation of the utilities. The relocated portion of Harbor Drive is estimated completion of that work by the end of this week. When these, when the, when those projects are completed, the Public Works Department will begin grading and draining work in preparation for paving. 
So hopefully by the end of this week, Powell Clinch and CUB will have all the utilities correct it and put in the right easement. Uh, then our public works will come in, do the preliminary work for the road and also the drainage. And then we'll put it out to bid uh, to actually pave the street. And we're doing other upgrades. We'll put street lights on it, uh, working with CUB on that. They're installing four fire hydrants for the area. I don't know if you've been out there recently. There's some very nice houses going up in the area. So it'll be some, some big improvements. So what's your estimate as far as this being completed? I'm hoping probably, what do you think, Dwayne? End of July, maybe, probably depending on, weather. on, on well, the weather and, uh, or how uh, quick we can get somebody in to asphalt it. But hopefully no later than end of summer. Okay. Uh, finance report, defer to Gail. Our sales tax is coming in, you know, steadily with about a five to six percent increase every month. Um, year to date for the county is right at six percent, so we're pretty much in line that with a little excess. Um, we've exceeded our property tax budget, uh, what we budgeted for it by, by probably somewhere around forty thousand dollars. So if you look at our revenues, our revenues, even with if you take out the um, ARPA money, is still a million plus over what we budgeted for uh, excess money. So that's, our numbers are looking really good this year. Um, I have budget amendment number eight, which they are all capital outlay with the exception of the fifth one down. And uh, the school system is requesting to transfer the $120,000 out of the reserve that we have for capital projects for their South Clinton school project. Here approval for budget amendment number eight. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Gann. Yes. Councilman McBride, Councilman Harold, Councilman Staley. Mm -hmm. Councilman Hatmaker. Councilman Farrell. Yes. Councilman yes. Budget amendment number eight passes. Anything else? That's all we have, Mayor. Any additional questions for, for Mr. Houck? Roger, I had one, um, and we talked about it briefly earlier this week. I've, I've gotten more calls, and maybe others if you have also, about the um, um, striping of the bridge and Clinch and Main in general. Still, still a, 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 seems like a hazard that, that, that I'll keep on hearing about that, the, the near misses. And this, what's the update? What can we do? I know we're kind of, uh, you know, uh, just at the, at the uh, request of the Blaylock or, or, or TDOT to, to get this done. Pretty much we're at the mercy, as you said, of Blaylock and TDOT. We've uh, sent, since you asked me about it, I checked, we've sent three emails since the first of the year, plus I know we've had between myself and, and Lynn Murphy, several phone conversations with, with TDOT. I think Lynn's had more probably with Blade Lock. The last correspondence we got was about two and a half weeks ago, and it was from um, the district supervisor of operations, which his reply was that the contractor had submitted their high contrast striping for the bridge and the pricing is currently being evaluated by the department, which is TDOT, and that uh, that's what they're waiting on. So we're, we're not getting any really good answers. I did send a put another email after that to uh, Amanda Snowden with TDOT, who's number two in command in this area, and I've not yet got a reply back. So we continually try to stay on them to see where we're at on it. Of course, with days like today, with it raining, uh, it's frustrating for all of us because it makes it even worse. From a, let me ask Zach a question from a legal standpoint. I'm just concerned from a well, I'm concerned about, you know, there's so many near misses, the law of average is going to hit us at some point. And I'm just, would, would, would you think uh, even, um, I don't know how you should say it legally, but just, just put them on notice to say, hey, there's, there's an issue here that needs to be addressed that hasn't been addressed. Yeah, I, I think the question becomes of, of reasonableness on the city's part and, um, you know, what, what our obligations and duties are. And I think 
it, if we continue, continue to alert the state um, and maybe heighten the, the rhetoric, so to speak, to, to let them know that, that we have concerns. And, um, but I, I think that's the extent of, of our duties and obligations. Conversation we had earlier today, and it may be time that we do this. You hate to, but it may be that, that we go ahead and, and copy Nashville on it. Sometimes you take it to that level, and it seems to get a little better response. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, because I think what Scott's alluding to is if there is an accident, you know, it could be tragic, and we mm -hmm. want to make sure that we're doing all of our due diligence to address a safety concern that I think is being articulated, at least observed. Um, I'm not a, you know, I don't think any of us are, are experts when it comes to traffic and safety, but we're, we're hearing from citizens some, some issues that we'd like to make sure that Nashville gets addressed. So, I, yeah, I know that you, what you're talking about when you see, see somebody mm -hmm. else's boss in the line, mm -hmm. and you, that's an attention getter. Yeah. So I would say go for it. Well, Can I guess it? my frustration is I think with, with, with everybody on council and staff is, you know, this could have been remedied six or seven months ago with just temporary tape and temp whatever they use to, to strop that until it gets warmer weather and they get permission to do something permanent. That could have been done and it hadn't been done yet. Well, and I think that the, the permanent is the thermal image, thermal plastic that they use mm -hmm. has to be warmer weather. But right. You, but you're right, they could could have been other things yes. that, that we've asked yeah. for. Okay. Well, do we need to vote on that? No. that I, we ask you to yeah. have a little stronger wording in that letter. We can do that. All right. Thank you. Anything else for Roger? Thanks, Roger. Um, under ordinances and resolutions, first reading of new ordinances, we have ordinance number 672 for the fiscal year 2022-23 budget. Um, Gail, did you want to, or you want to talk about the top line, or are you going to, Roger? Either one. Um, we gave you the budget highlights when we gave you the budget. We've not, we've not changed much since we put that out there. Um, you know, we, our biggest thing on property tax was our equalization factor, which we were not expecting it to be such a big blow, but it's a 0.7295 equalization factor. Of course, we kept the property tax rate at the same. Uh, I increased several revenues this year back up to where we were at prior to COVID and the things that we've seen go going on. Uh, employee raises are in there at 4%. Um, of course, we've, we've hired a planner in the Coast Department, so that's fully funding, funding that position. Um, we've got health insurance budgeted with a 20% increase. We've had a couple of somewhat rocky years, high experience, so we're anticipating hopefully not 20%, but we're budgeting at 20%. Um, I've kept the TCRS contribution at 7%. I've mentioned this before that um, to help us through that up and down, if you remember last year, our TCRS rate had went to zero. And of course this year it's at 3.12, but we have remained funding above that level. So that really helps us to ride that out and to cushion for later increases or whatever's going on. Um, we did an increase in retiree insurance, which really has no impact to the budget. Uh, it's a very, very minimal from $15 a year per month to 20. Um, and some miscellaneous items we mentioned there and um, gasoline was a big thing that we did some increases on this year just with what's going on now, not knowing what's gonna be ahead. Of course, we've got some Additional expenses with the armory as we wait and see uh, what we do with that building. And I think that's pretty much it. We have an excess of $908. Do not spend it all in one place. That's what my what mama buy, always told me. Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> I bet I could give it to some department heads. We'll take care of that <laughs> quick. <laughs> Any questions for Gail? Thanks, Gail. For those watching, usually the first ordinance is more procedural because it takes two and we'll have probably more, I'm sure, more questions um, next month. Um, so I'd hear a motion to approve ordinance number 672 on first reading. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, roll call, please. Councilman Gannon? Yes. Councilman Bright, Councilman Harrell, Councilman Sagan? Councilman Hatmayer, Councilman Ferris? Yes. Mayor Burke. Yes, ordinance number um, 672 passes on first 
of two readings. Um, no second readings, no resolutions. Any old business business before us? The the people that came in, is there anything y'all like to speak about? Or are you just here just to, to watch? Okay, well, welcome. Um, any new business before us? Motion to adjourn? Means adjourn. Okay.